Hey, check one, two. Can you hear me? She's got a little closer. <clears throat> No, I'm just asking if you can hear me. I didn't join it. Oh, yeah. Hey guys. Hey, let me know if you can hear me. Are we going to start in four or five minutes? Just waiting for people. And then we let's go on in. My changes too. Can you hear me or not? <laughs> Two minutes. I'll just share this link. Seagulls, man. Mm 
How's everyone? Who's here? I can't see anyone. Hey, put your name in the chat. I want to see who is here. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk about digestion, what be what's happening with food, just general, what we eat, how the body breaks down food, and then from there, what we should eat, how much calories. It's going to be everything around fat loss, so prioritize that. Nothing... Uh, <clears throat> Nothing a little bit we're gonna talk about training, but more about fat loss and nutrition and diet. And then next one, what we're gonna do performance seminar. That's when we're gonna do more about performance food if you want to build muscles, stuff like this. But today is more just fat loss and how to plan your diet for fat loss, uh what calories to eat, how much under your maintenance. So trying to explain everything. And in the end, the last couple, 10, 15, half an hour, you can shoot questions and I'm trying to answer them. Okay, since no one put in their name into the chat, we're gonna start. So, let me just check. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Digestion first, and uh, and then calories. So why we need to eat food, right? Your body needs energy, and then only ways we can we are not cars. Yeah, we have to we what we need is petrol, right, or some kind of energy. So that's how body works. We need to put energy into the body by food and liquids, which has calories. And calories basically is just protein, carbs, and fat, and then nutrients, amino acid, and then um, those add up calories which the body can break down. So the food has components when you eat, and you start chewing, put it down to your stomach, and then get some uh, digesting fluid with it, and in small intents, your body starts breaking down these bigger chunks of food into small, smaller particles. So this, the big ones is, uh, protein, carbs, and fat, what everyone knows. And there are smaller ones, the micronutrients like vitamins and minerals and some even smaller compounds, but we don't worry about that, so those today. So uh, once your body break, broke down those, those particles, the macronutrients, so they are bigger ones, the fat, the carbs, and the protein, is gonna break down even smaller particles and then the protein is gonna break down to amino acids, the carbs gonna break down to simple sugar, and the fat is gonna break down to fatty acids and glycerol. Um, so um, why is this important and how does it work? So once, once these are break down in the small intense, your bloodstream is gonna put those little amino acid, glycerols, fatty acids, and simple sugar into the bloodstream, and then your body is gonna take these nutrients to the places where needed. So in, in case of muscles, right, when you're doing bicep curse, let's say you're doing an arm workout, and your bicep needs uh, amino acid, what you're gonna do is you're gonna eat, your body's gonna break down the, the um, amino acids from protein, and then the bloodstream from your small intents, it's gonna take Everything into the damaged muscle fibers is going to build it bigger, and then that's how muscle builds. And the same thing with um, um, sugar. Same way, if, if your body requires more sugar for running, let's say for your leg or the brain, run on sugar and fat. So, whatever the body needs, the nutrients is going to put it there uh, through the bloodstream. So that's why digestion is important. And then from here, how to lose fat. Your body has um, 
storages. You have to uh, imagine that like uh, like at home you get a fridge, right? When you buy food, you put everything in the fridge. So everyone, uh, every person has different uh, the storages in different places. Mainly men, they we have more storage around the stomach. Women usually have it around the hip and the thighs, but you cannot control this. It's genetics. Where you're gonna store fat first? Uh, that's gonna deprive you by biogenetics. So you're not thinking you cannot change that. So why people want to lose, or we always want to lose uh, weight from the stomach is because there are around the stomach there are the most fat usually. Uh, but you're gonna choose that. So wherever you gain fat first, that's gonna be the last one you're gonna go. So even if you can see your definition in your arm or definition in your forearm or legs, those are the, the places usually uh, which the less fatty places because the the body doesn't want to store uh, fat around the places. So genetically, you're gonna store around for your stomach first and then hip, uh, maybe on the back sometimes inner ties, so those are the main common uh, fat storage places. So your body's gonna fill up those first. Like you have food from the shopping, you're gonna put them on into your fridge, right? But when you overeat, so that's when overeating comes into play, you're, you're gonna get fat basically everywhere, right? The first you're gonna, you're gonna store fat around the places where you genetically store fat. So let's say it's around your hip, and then you're going to be, when there's no more place to go, there's no more storage to go, you're going to go for the next storage. So if you, if your fridge is full, you're going to start putting um, stuff into your freezer. And then when your freezer is full, you're going to put stuff into, your, uh, into the cupboard. And then where there's no more place to put food, then you're going to start putting place uh, food into, I don't know, to your kitchen table and then to your living room and then to your bedroom and then just food everywhere. So that's what the body does when you start overeating and gaining so much weight that is your body doesn't have to, cannot store it in the, in the, in the normal storage, let's say it's around the hip, then it's gonna start putting it on your leg, on the chest, on the back, on your face and whatever. But it's, it's always gonna determine by genetics where you're gonna gain fat the same way as you gain muscle as well. You cannot choose this stuff. The only thing you can choose is how much you eat so you can play around you know, how much body fat you have on your body. Um, so, if so far, if you don't have questions, I'm gonna go with um, some common questions what I always get from people is, is how many calories to eat. Now it's really, it's, you, like I cannot tell you how much calories we eat. What I do with clients, I, I check their um, their dairy intake for a week at least or 10 days. The more data I have, the, the, the better job I can do. So um, what happens is um, once you start tracking your calories, you can see how much you eat for a week or 10 days or even a month. So the bigger the data, the better it is. So there you're gonna see uh, if you go, um, first of all, how much color you eat. So how much, um, um, what do you call it? Your metabolism works, right? So let's say 2000 calories, you eat 2000 calories every day. That's where your body runs. You, your body runs on 2000 calories. So if you just eat 2000 calories, you're not gonna gain weight, you're not gonna lose weight. That's your maintenance calories. So if you put, your food in and then average is going to be at 2000 calories every day then that's your maintenance calorie so now from here if you want to lose weight you have to cut under this calorie now you can do basically two or three things you can eat less move more or the combination of the two but since we're not talking about we only talk about fat loss i'm going to just talk about how to decrease your calories so the most people make the mistake they they start cutting too much at the beginning. So look, if you already have two, if you are on two thousand calories every day, or the first thing I usually do with clients is just stabilize their calories. So what you need to do is um, see if uh, your days are like ups and downs. So it's fluctuating a lot. Let's say on Monday you eat two thousand, but Tuesday you only eat one thousand because you're busy or something comes up. So Wednesday you are very hungry and you're gonna eat three thousand. 
So there is a big gap between your between your maintenance level, right? So your maintenance level is 2,000, Tuesday you eat 1,000, so you eat below your maintenance. And then on Wednesday, you eat 3,000. So it's a big gap, there's 2,000 gap between those two days, which is your body doesn't like it. So your body like certainty. So what you wanna do is just stabilize the level. And then usually people start losing weight on that. So I think the best strategy you can do first for like a week or two is just to stabilize your calories. It doesn't really matter how much you eat, but just make an average. So what I like to do is just start tracking your calories like my fitness pal or something. And then um, and then um, see how much you eat in a week. Let's say 2,000 every week, um, every day. So in one week is 1,400, right? No, 10,000, Jesus, math, man. 2,000, yeah, 14,000 calories. So what you wanna do is, um, is just make an average on that. So let's say one day you eat 1,000 and then 3,000 and then 1,000 and then 3,000. So it's gonna be a 4,000 um, in a week and then you just take an average and it's gonna be 2,000 every day. So what you wanna do is just eat 2,000 every day. Your body likes certainty. Your body knows, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get 2,000 every day. So, um, I don't have to store fat anymore because what happens sometimes when you when you under eat your calories let's say you eat thousand calorie on tuesday and then wednesday three thousand or even if you eat two thousand for two three days or one thousand for two three days and then you are super hungry you starve because you were under eating for three days and then on a weekend what usually people do is just go way over their maintenance so they jump from one thousand to five or six thousand is so big jump from your maintenance level even if you even if you under eat your calories per day so the body gets used to the, like a smaller maintenance level um, then what your body gonna do is just way too much what it's used to and it's gonna do with you because your body cannot do anything with calories is you can e either can digest it so use it wherever it needs it or you can store it it's gonna be just like disappear in the air. So if you don't burn it off, your body's gonna store it as an energy or as a fat, because fat is just stored energy. So what you wanna do is just uh, try to stabilize your calories by eating the same every day. And usually I see clients good results by just stabilizing their calories and then eat the same amount of calorie every day, and then you start to lose weight. Okay, once the weight loss stops, that's when you can start dropping the calories, but just a little bit. So don't um, fall into the trap when you set up your fitness pal, let's say, which is a lot like, I think that's that's the one of the the big uh, faults of, the, of this application. It's gonna ask you, what is your current weight and how much you wanna be? So let's say you are 80 kilos and you want to be 70 kilos. What is going to, it's going to give you a number, but the number is going to be way too small because you can put it like, okay, I'm going to be 70 in one month or three months or what you can get whatever you want. The, the application is going to just give you an, an estimated calorie and then go under. So it's going to give you the numbers, what the 70 kilos person should eat. But you don't want to do that because uh, what you want to do is be a 79 kilo person first and then be a 78 kilo person first. You're not going to be from 80 to 70, right? You're going to be slowly going down. So what you want to set up your fitness pal, instead of losing 10 kilos, you want to lose one kilo. And then once you lost that kilo, you're going to lose one kilo again, then one kilo again. So the fitness pal is not going to go crazy instead of giving you 2,000 uh, calories instead of 2,000, what she's gonna do is from 2,000 is gonna give you 1,800 because you wanna set up realistic goals. So you're not gonna lose 10 kilos in months. You're gonna lose 10 kilos probably in 10 months if you wanna do it healthy. Okay, it's, it depends on a lot of things, but a minimum six months, what you wanna aim for here. And um, so what you wanna do is always just lose one kilo at a time. So what I would say is just set up your calories from uh, 
if if you don't want to do if you want to do manually, then you just set up your calories two hundred or two hundred and fifty calories in a deficit. So back to the two thousand calorie example, I would set up my calories two thousand and seven fifty, two thousand eight hundred maybe, and then see what happens. So you need to experience if you do it for the first time. You need to experience a little bit how your body works, how you react to certain things, um, and then this is going to minimize. Uh, cravings as well because if you cut your calories way too much then you might can do it for a couple days or even a week but then you're going to be so hungry you're just going to eat and you're just going to give up and then the hunger is going to take over and the craving is going to take over so what you want to aim for it is always the long term so you want to do it nice and slow and then just slowly decrease your calories the the saying is always says you want to lose weight by eating as much as possible so you don't want to starve yourself. You always want to do just slow reductions of the calories day by day, week by week. And then once the, the weight loss is stopped, then you go under again. So what I usually to do with clients, stabilize the calories. That's number one. The second one, go under your maintenance, but just a little bit. Usually 10% is good. So if you're 2,000, 10% is 200. So going 1,800. And then see what happens. Start eating 1,800 every day. Don't fluctuate. Don't go over. Don't go under. Just 1,800 every day. And then once you got that, what you want to do is see what happens. If you start losing weight, why would you eat less? Like there's no point to eat to starve yourself and feel, feel miserable when you're losing weight 1,800, right? So just eat 1,800 as much as you can while you're losing weight. If the weight loss is stopped, always you need to uh, check your weight every week i would say do it in the same day same scale same place same time so wednesday seven in the morning every wednesday seven in the morning as long as you lose weight you're fine because weight loss is like there's water retention and everything so if you check every day you might go up sometimes and you go crazy so you just check once a week it's gonna be fine when, once the weight loss stops it's from 1800 you go 10 percent below again it's not gonna be 200 it's gonna be 180. So what you want to do is you're going to eat 1,620 or something like that. And then see what happens. Start losing weight. If it stops, you go below that. Well, once you reach the goal weight, then you might have to change your goals. You might want to build muscle or something else. But what you want to do is slowly, slowly decrease your calories instead of doing big jumps because it never works i've been in the business for long but if you just want to cut your calories in half because you want to do quick results first fat like your body is always way behind what you're doing today so if you're doing something today it's gonna be visible in six weeks so um if you start just cutting your calories in half you're just gonna be so hungry in a week or two weeks time and you're not gonna see results because your body is behind by six weeks um, so, um, you're going to see results, you're going to be miserable, you're hungry, and then you just start eating, you're just going to give up. So what I like to do instead, just do stabilize your calories, go below, and then just put the days in, in, day out, and then you're going to see great results in six weeks, and then in six weeks again. So I like the third thing I like to do is take photos, but just every six weeks or every month, just to compare where you're at, because you're going to always see better, because if you see yourself every day, you're not going to see results because the results is so slim, it's so small that if you see it every day, the decrease is going to be minimal. But if you only see yourself every four months or every four weeks on a picture, you're going to see the difference. So um, where were we? Uh, stabilize your calories, go below your calories, take photos. And, um, and yeah, that's the main thing. Just on calories and how much to eat and then from here we can start breaking play around with your fat your carbs and your protein intake micros and vitamins again it's going to be a bit different so start with the micro uh, macro nutrients how to calculate them so you get the big ones what i suggest always is a fat you're going to go by uh, depending on the weight so if you're 80 kilos you're going to be 80 grams of fat every day, but it's very simple. So one gram after every kilogram of your body weight or half gram per pound. 
Um, so that's always a staple. Um, in protein, it's a bit tricky. So if you're not working out for health reason, you can go by one gram protein after every kilogram again. So same as the fat. So if you're 80 kilo, 80 grams of protein, good for health. If you want to build muscle, then you want to at least one and a half of your body weight in grams, or I would say more towards the two grams. So if you're 80, 80 kilos, you go around 160. I like if you like it's a little bit overshoot, then it's still fine because um, your body's gonna use it just the energy. But the main goal is to don't go below. So you always have extra amino acids, extra protein in your body. So once your body has to uh, build those muscles after hard workout, then it's always there. So for health reason, one grams per uh, per grams per body weight in kilograms, same with the fat in carbs, it gets tricky. So you can go for double or triple. Again, depends how uh, busy you are in terms of activities, your daily life, or if you train as well. But for maintenance, if you just want to go for calories, you aim around 12 or maybe like 14 calories per uh, pounds per body weight. So it's around 28, yeah, 26, 28, 30 uh, calories per uh, kilograms. So if you're 80 kilos, then you times three that up, which is gonna be 2,400 calories for an 80 kilo person. And then you're gonna be completely healthy. You're not gonna lose weight. You're not gonna uh, gain weight. So that's gonna be your maintenance. And then see what happens. So if you don't want, if you wanna just start uh, and you don't know your your maintenance, you just wanna set up uh, a calories, then just go triple your body weight in kilogram. And that's gonna be your um, that's gonna be your um, calories as a maintain as a maintenance level, and then see what happens. If you gain weight, then you have to go below. If you lose weight, then you have to go up. But because it's weight loss, you'll be fine. Uh, I still think my method is better, just to track your calories because everyone is different. This this is just the general uh, guidance. So it might work for most people, but it might not gonna work for you because your metabolism is too slow or too fast or like, you know, you can get a lot of things. So what you need to do is just track your calories, get an average and then stabilize that average calories, okay? So one day is 1,000, other day is 3,000, get an average is 2,000, that's gonna be your maintenance. Start from there, see what happens. If you don't lose weight, go 10% below there see what happens if you start losing weight if you stop losing weight go 10 percent below that and it's done so far if you don't have questions i'm gonna go to the next one which is which is cravings so i was talking about cravings uh before and i think that's that's the that's the main issue. People give up diet because they crave so much or they, they are just hungry all the time. That's why I said when you cut too much calories uh, too fast, then you're just going to, the craving is going to be so big and the hunger is going to be so big that you're just going to give up in one day. And then one day you give up like, okay, if I did give up today, then I'm going to give up tomorrow as well. And then, and then, eventually you just got lost and then you try again the next monday same thing happens by wednesday you're super hungry so i think cravings is the is the biggest uh, biggest issue why people give up uh, on diet so how to stop cravings obviously eat as much as you can as i had before as i said before and then just go slowly with the diet or what uh what i always said to my clients in my in my training and my uh, nutrition approach is 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 the is that you can eat whatever you want as long as you stay in your calories, right? If each if it's your goal is just fat loss, not health, you can eat burger every day or pizza every day as long as you don't overeat. You're gonna lose weight because the body is easy. It's 
you know, it's calories in, calories out. You put less calories in, then your body is going to lose weight. I'm not saying it's healthy, but that's how it works. Um, so if you're craving something, just eat it. We just have to make sure it fits in your in your daily budget of calories because it's just it's that's all about weight loss and performance. You have a daily budget like you have in money, so you have two thousand calories or two thousand coins per day, and you can spend it whatever. Some foods are more expensive than other, so let's say a pizza is is thousand coin, while a broccoli is only. 100 coin so obviously you can you can spend your you can have uh, very expensive value um, food but you can only buy you know a, a, a smaller amount or you can have cheap food then you can eat a lot or you can buy a lot so if uh, if a pizza cost me thousand coins then I only have two slices of pizza and I'm going to hit my calorie goals, goals. But if I turn into broccoli or veggies, I can eat way more before I hit my calorie goals for the day. So, um, but if you crave a lot, then why don't you have just a slice of pizza or, or a healthier version of the pizza, something which is remind you and it's going to satisfy your pizza cravings. And then the rest you can still spend on on food which is quality and it's gonna fill up your stomach so you're not gonna feel hungry and then you, if you don't feel hungry that's one tick and if you tick off your craving that's another thing so what i like to do when i crave very much what well, because i'm always used to finish with every eating with something sweet <laughs> so i always like craving for something sweet even if i'm like super full i can always eat something sweet so what I do, I just eat as much as I can with uh, with veggies and the normal cooked food. And then at the end, I'm just going to have something sweet, you know, a banana or a yogurt or something at the end. So it's only 100 calories, but I'm full and I satisfy my, but I'm full and my, and I satisfy my cravings as well. So that's how you should combine uh, hunger and cravings against those two things is, Eat full, get full before you get your snacks. And then you're not going to crave a long run. It's not going to be hard at the beginning, but it's it's more in your mind. If you start getting busy in a day, so you just forget to eat those stuff, it's harder when you're bored. But I talked about bored eating. It's another other topic. Uh, it's harder when you're bored, but um, mainly cravings in your mind. But if you really crave something, just you can you can eat whatever as long as you stay in your calories. So you never you should never limit yourself. To those things what you like or what you want to eat because the, in the long run you, you shouldn't think about diet as, as a six-week thing or something that you're gonna do for a couple of weeks and you lost the you lost your weight and you dare what you want and then you just go back to your bad habits you need to create something that you can follow for the rest of your life right so you want to be if you want to be a 70 kilo person for the rest of your life, then you have to eat like a 70 kilo person. It can be anything. It could be, you know, pizza every day. It's not healthy. But as long as you don't eat over as a 70 kilo person should eat, then you're always going to be 70 kilos. So you need to create a diet, a nutrition plan, where it's gonna you, can, you, you can stick to it for the rest of your life. So that's one. Uh, hunger and cravings. You can eat whatever you want as long as you stick your calorie budget per day. Okay, next question. What I put up here is um, cutting carbs is the best way to lose weight. Definitely not. As I said, as calories in, calories out, cutting carbs is not going to – carbs is just a macronutrient. It's, it's coming from calories. So it doesn't matter. You cannot, like – your body's not, you're not smart enough to, to make the decision. Your body is smart enough to, to know what to distribute carbs, fat, and, and protein, and vitamins and minerals. The only thing you can do is just eat less what you should, and you're going to lose weight. So if you overeat carbs, you're going to get fat. If you undereat carbs, you're going to lose weight. If you overeat fat, you're going to get fat. If you undereat fat, you're going to lose weight. 
if you overeat protein, you're gonna get fat. If you undereat protein, you're gonna lose weight. It's just calories in, calories out. It's it doesn't matter. The reason why we in bodybuilding or fitness you hear this to cut carbs is because you your fat level is already low because you set up your fat level to minimum, which is like one gram per body weight in kilograms, what you need for health reasons. You cannot go really below that because if you go below, you need a certain amount of fat for your organs and your brain. If you go below, you're going to get sick. So there's a minimum is one gram per kilograms of body weight. And if you train, you already set your your um, your protein in the maximum, which is two grams per kilogram after every kilogram per grams. So it's gonna be, again, that's the maximum. So these two things are maximized out. The only thing you can play with is your carb source. So if you wanna lose weight from there, you can only touch your carbs or you're gonna lose muscle, which most people don't want to in fitness industry. So it's coming from fitness industry and bodybuilding, but for regular people, for general population, it doesn't matter. You just want to eat less calorie overall. So if you if you eating, um, so if your carbs are very low but your fat is really high, then you can play around with your fat, obviously. So if you follow a low carb, high fat diet, and you want to lose weight, you're not gonna cut carbs anymore because it's on the minimum. You're gonna cut the fat. So the only thing you can play around is 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 your calories. So it's you need to see which is maximized out and then the that's why we usually don't play around with protein because in the fitness industry you want to keep your muscle as much as possible so you cannot really touch on protein um so yeah carb is not the enemy fat is not the enemy nothing is the enemy it's just overeating is the enemy so just want to keep your calories low in general um Cutting calories but not losing weight, uh, I never saw that. <laughs> if you cut your calories, you're gonna lose weight. What happens that I said is is people think they are eating less, but they they don't know how much they eat. They, there's a study where it shows that people are like way over think, like under think their calories are. So they think like, oh, you know, it's just eyeball it and it's like it's 100 calories, but in reality it's like 200, 300. So you need to track your calories because that's gonna be honest. And um, and um, what happens? And then they eat low calories for like five days, but the weekend they are like triple the amount of calories. So they don't see. And they all people they like oh you know wine doesn't have calories or alcohol doesn't have calories. Everyone has calories. But it's not water. So you just make sure you track your calories. Be honest with yourself, and then if you eat under, you'll be fine. You're gonna lose weight always. Uh, exercise improve weight loss, of course it does. It's uh, it's not the exercise; it's just you're burning more calories because uh, we're literally burning energy. So your body is like um, like a fireplace. It's literally burning calories, and then how you uh, lose calories or lose weight, your body is turning into heat and is dissipating from your body and um, in uh, but it's happening naturally obviously if you move more your body gets warmer the muscle moving more there's moving parts in your body it's more friction you're gonna use more energy and then more um, air and uh, co2 is gonna um, you are gonna exhale co2 more so it's not about how much you sweat, it's how much you exhale by burning more calories during exercising. So yeah, training obviously helps. That's why there are, but you don't have to like necessarily do exercises. If you just walk more than usual, that's an extra exercise. If you just move around more, just stay more time on the feet because obviously when you're laying down, you burn less calories when you're sitting, you burn less calories when you're walking, you burn less calories when you're running. So. Obviously, if you increase the activity level, you're gonna burn more calories overall. So, because because this is a fat loss seminar, I'm not gonna talk about training much. What you wanna understand is calorie in, calorie out. So, um, just make sure you you burn more what you put in, and 
and basically that's it. So if you can combine the two by moving more, just spending more time on your feet in general and eating a little less, obviously it's it's a win-win. But what you can do is just, if you don't want to eat less, just move more, you're going to, uh, you're going to do the same. So your body is going to still lose fat because again, fat is just to store energy. If you start moving more, you get your body have extra energy to work with and you don't have, uh, and it can start burning off those, those extra calories, what you have on you. Uh, time restricted eating, uh, fasting, eating night is worst for weight loss. No, again, if you depend, you have a daily calorie budget. Once you eat that, you cannot eat more. If you finish your eating daily budget in at three o'clock uh, afternoon, then you cannot eat more rest of the day. If you if you haven't eaten all day and you go home at before midnight, ten minutes before midnight, and you eat two thousand calories, you're still in your calories. You're not gonna gain weight because. Every day you have the budget, you have to eat it. And as long as you don't overeat that, you can eat at midnight. It doesn't matter. Or just before midnight if you want to spend it on the same day. Um, so no, eating night is not going to make you fat. Uh, Time-restricted eating. I'm not calling fasting because fasting is – I think fasting is more like if you don't eat for days. If you just eat um, – eight hour windows in a day that's not really fasting it's, it's just time restricted eating you have a window to eat and that's it everyone has a window so you don't eat when you're sleeping right so your window is 16 hours you're just shortening that window so uh, that's just time restricted eating so instead of from eight in the morning to eight at night you're gonna be from 12 to eight at night or from two at eight at night so restricting that window but it's still not fasting to be in a fasting state, you have to skip a couple of days. And I'm not saying just switch to fasting. And I think you time restricted eating is a good way to move into fasting. And then if you're getting better and then the hunger goes down, you can go for shorter, shorter windows and then skip a day and then skip two days and then skip three days. Um, fasting has a lot of benefits, but only if you fast long enough that those hormones are starting to activate. I'm going to go into that. There are hormones where um, start working, start burning more fat, supposedly when uh, when you eat. But there is not much of a difference. Again, it's so diet and exercise is so individual that it, it's hard to generalize stuff. So you have to see what works for you. And if it's fasting or time restricted eating is going to make you eat less then do that you know if it's if it's a uh, plant-based diet is going to be then do that so your main goal is to find something find a find a diet which is works for you and you can follow for the rest of your life don't think about it it's just you know it's a fat diet i need to do this and it's, there's no magic pill you just have to eat less and at the end of the day there are so many variables you can follow but they all go to the same direction to eating less and what you burn, and that's it. Am I not visible anymore? No. What's going on? Still can you hear me? Or no? Um, what happened? What's going on? Can you hear me or no? Okay, we are back, I guess. Maybe running out of time. So if you, uh, yeah, if you have, Questions, it's super hot here, man. If you have uh, questions, you can shoot me now because I think my camera is burning as well. So um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna stay here for a couple of minutes and then um, 
and then that was it. Hope you enjoy it. Cheat days. Uh, the prime problem with cheat days is the cheat days turning to cheat weeks and stuff. So cheat meals, I prefer cheat meals. I think it's better if you, again, allow yourself to eat something wherever you like every day, as long as you stay in your calories. It is for a long run, it's way better than having a, a specific day where you can just eat whatever you want because you're always going to overeat. And if you eat 2,000 calories every day and your cheat day is 10,000 calories, then you just lost you know, five days of progress. So I wouldn't do that. I would it just rather what is, what is good in nowadays, new science shows that diet breaks are works. So that's why I've been doing the last year. I'm practic- um, uh, experiencing with that, experimenting with that, sorry to um, do diet breaks so you do a diet for like four weeks and then take a week off like um like you increase your calories for a couple days or even a week where you if you eat uh 1800 calories for four weeks and you see you struggle and you start you know going um harder going to the gym or or just in general you feel like you going in depression or you're just not feeling great then take a week off from diet where you go back to 2000 to the previous maintenance. You're still going to lose weight, but then you're going to feel good as well. You're going to feel strong and then you can drop it back to 1800. And, um, and science shows it's, it's, it shows good, good, uh, good results with diet breaks. So what I suggest instead of cheat days, have a, have a diet break and then just go back to, you know, go back to the, those calories where you started from but only for a week don't go crazy over just increase with 200 for a week so a couple of days where you feel better and then drop it back under your maintenance and then just anything diet pills fat burners i wouldn't use those if you're not professional bodybuilders, you don't need those shit. Just eat below your calories and you'll be fine. Okay, guys, if you hope you enjoyed, if you're watching this not live, but you rewatch this later, then let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm going to check back on later. And then next time we're going to do performance. So we how to eat to increase your muscle size or your performance in the gym or in your sport. And I'll catch you next one. Thank you for joining me. Train complete. Train complete.